Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews and today I'm looking at video glasses and in particular the Fat Shark range of video glasses because that's what I use. I've used them for ages. This is the original pair of Fat Sharks I bought a long, long time ago and I've been using them very regularly. They still work and although I've had to change the little foam strips around here several times because they break up and fall off, I'm really happy with it. Now, these ones I like them because, or for several reasons. First of all, they have what you call a wide field of view, and that's basically the field of view that you get when you look through the glasses. Now, for those who haven't used these, when you look through these, you effectively are doing something equivalent to watching a television set in a dark room. So there are two things you can see. You can see the picture and the blackness around it. With a large field of view, the picture's very big and the blackness is very small, so it's quite immersive. You're sitting there, it's like you're surrounded, almost surrounded by the image that's displayed on the little LCDs inside. And that's great, that's brilliant, but there's a price to pay for that. To get that very large field of view, you've got to use powerful magnification. And you're looking in here, you can see there's some really powerful lenses that magnify the little LCDs. And unfortunately, those lenses are pretty crap, they're made of plastic. And as anyone who knows anything about optics will tell you, if you make lenses out of plastic, then they end up being not very good and you get color fringing around the edges because the different colors of light bend at different rates. So you get an, um, chromatic aberrations around the edge and a lack of focus, which means if you've got an OSD on your screen, then the writing that appears, say up here and down there, is really hard to read because it gets blurry. So I like these because a lot of the FPV I fly, I don't use an OSD. I just bear back. Just all I'm looking at is the image because I'm flying fast and close and I don't need to know how far away I are or how, up, how far up I am because I can tell looking through at the picture. But what I do like is just being right up there, almost sitting in the front of the model. And that's where these things work really well. I love them. Doesn't have a receiver, doesn't have a head tracker. It's just the very bottom basic edition that I could afford at the time. But of course, things have moved on. You can't buy these old clunky plastic ones anymore. There is an equivalent now available, which has got much nicer plastic. I, that's about the only thing I don't have in the Fat Shark range. Um, but these ones, you know, you might be able to pick them up secondhand, but they're not bad, you know. Um, I don't know what they'd be worth if you could find them on the secondhand market, but you know, I'd be very sad if these broke. But now they've got newer ones, of course, and everyone's probably seen these, the Dominators, which um, are a different kettle of fish. And that's partly because they've got this much nicer plastic. Now, the old plastic of the original ones, that was hard and brittle, and um, I'm sure if you drop these, they'd smash into a million pieces. If you drop these, it's probably only the bits inside that will smash into a million pieces. So that's much nicer, isn't it? All the parts will be contained. Um, they use a different set of optics too. They, instead of just having lenses that directly magnify the LCDs, there seems to be a surface coated reflective mirror in here, which means the, the path between the LCDs and, the, and your eyes is probably longer, which means they can use lenses that are less likely to cause problems. So you actually get a, uh, a sharper image on these, but one of the reasons you get a sharper image on these is because they have a narrower field of view. And that's, that's one of the reasons I don't like these as much. Now, this is a fully optioned set. It's got a built-in head tracker. So when you move your head, you can have your camera pan and tilt. And it's got a built-in receiver. So, you know, this does much more than these ever did. And they give a sharper picture, but the picture is smaller. It's a, consider it, this is like sitting in a room watching a 52-inch LCD screen and this is like sitting in the same room in the same position and watching a 33 inch LCD screen excuse the noise of aircraft passing by uh, which means that it's not as immersive you're not going to get that sort of I'm surrounded by the the picture thing which I really like um, but of course being sharper you can read the, uh, the on-screen display better and so forth so a lot of people like their dominators they love them and I must admit, I've been using these an awful lot for one simple reason. See, they've got the built-in receiver. And this is, I might point out too, this is the Fat Shark Immersion um, circularly polarized, I think they call them Spiro antennas. And these are great, look, you've got, they've got a little wire and you can bend it. And it stays bent, isn't that cool? So you can just line it up to suit. I wear these with my broad-brimmed hat, and my broad-brimmed hat comes out to here. So it, um, the aerial's still well clear. If you just want to fly close and fast, um, without having a pole, the built-in antenna, a built-in receiver is brilliant. And it connects up through the normal SMA connector there. Now, I use this in conjunction with my backpack, which is, people are going to say, well, how can you do that? Because, as we all know, the Fat Shark transmitters, this is a 600 milliwatt one, these transmitters are not on the same frequencies as the Foxtech or my backpack transmitters. So how can I possibly receive them on here? Well, 
I'll tell you how. It's, I'll just open the, it's got a little hatch here behind the antenna thing. Here we go. Take that hatch off and there is the receiver I'm using. And you'll notice that it doesn't have fat shark written on it, like this one. This is the receiver that came out of the Dominators. It's the fat shark receiver. This is a different receiver and I got this one from Team Black Sheep. And I love it because it means I can use my backpack, I can use my Fox Tech transmitters up to a watt or whatever they're you know, selling, the, the Sky RF ones. And so, brilliant, it's just what I wanted. So the modular construct of this whole set of uh, dominators is a great thing if you, if you don't want to fly the whole stock system. You can just change receivers and I think even the head tracker is a plug-in option so that makes life nice and simple. Now the only thing I don't like is that this piece of plastic, this little hatch is sometimes a real poo to get back in there. There we go, done. So there you are. Um, but yeah, that's why I wear these a lot. And the other reason that I don't like them too much is that um, these little plastic, these rubber eye cups here, I've got, I've got an old face, I've got fat around my eyes. As you get older, you get fat on your face. It's terrible, you know. And so with these, these don't actually press on your eyes. They press on your brow and on your quite a way down on your cheeks because of these, um, these foam strips here. All right, so I can wear these up and pull them tight and no worries. With these, however, they push into the area surrounding your eyes and when you're old, it causes your eyes to close up a bit and point at different angles. So it's really hard to get these set up so that they're blocking the light without forcing your eyes closed. And that may be just me, but I don't know. Also, this is, this is an older set of dominators and they had a problem with the older ones in so much as these rubber cups were barely held on by anything. So quite often just the act of putting them on would mean they'd come unhooked from the little lip that attached them. Now I gather that's been fixed, which would be great because as it is here, it's a real pain in the backside. So if you're going to buy some secondhand dominators, you want to check for that. A lot of people just glue them on because they were just such a pain in the backside that kept falling off all the time. But the other thing that annoyed me a little bit was with the old Fat Sharks, they had this Futaba type connector here which carried your, your um, video and your power. So you just have one plug connected up to your pole. Brilliant. But these ones, uh, they had to naff around and change things. You've got a power connector and you've got an AV connector and you've got a um, head track connector somewhere around here, head track connector. So they changed all the plugs and sockets, which means I can't just use these and then plug these in if I want to, because all the plugs are different. Ah, humbug, never mind, small thing. But suffice to say, these are a step forward for some people because they have that uh, sharper image and all the extra bells and whistles in them. Um, although you can get these, you could get these with a receiver in them as well. Not sure about a head tracker, don't know. But that's. The dominoes. Now, there is another Fat Shark more recent release, and I've got it in here, and I'll mention these little cases later on. Here it is. These are the Attitude, the Attitude video glasses. And ooh, I gotta say, I do like the plastic on these. We've gone from old Coke bottles painted black through the waxy, you know, sort of fairly tough plastic to rubberized finish. That is six on a string. That is, that's. Gorgeous. Oh, it feels so nice. feels real quality, that does. feels like real quality. Now, I think they're using the same connector, so it's got the same connector there for the power and the same AV connector, so that's good. It means you can interchange these, uh, even if you can't go interchange them with the old model. Now, this one's got built-in Fat Shark receiver, but it's not one you can plug and play. No hatch. Can't take it off, so I won't be able to use this with my FPV backpack or any of the Fox Tech receivers, unfortunately. Bit of a shame, never mind. It has the rubber eye cups and I've got to say at this stage I haven't actually tried these so I can't comment on whether these eye cups are any different to the dominator ones they look pretty much the same which means they're probably going to have that same pain in the backside problem of pushing your eyes closed if you're old and getting fat around the face like I am but one thing I should also mention about these glasses is these see these these are what they call the IPD adjustments now IPD stands for interpupillary distance and it's the, basically how far apart your eyes are and if you're a, a mean, sinister criminal type, your eyes will be really close together. And if you're a nice, kind, benevolent type, your eyes are further apart. So the criminals like to have these pushed right in, and the nice, benevolent people have them right out. That's just the way life is. Um, but you need that to make sure that the images that your eyes see actually overlap completely without being slightly displaced. And that enables it to set it up for you. For what, who, whatever your eyes are, you'll probably find an adjustment that fits just nicely by tweaking these. You know, everything looks super good. Same on the old ones, they had them basically on the front here, just here, just move the screens in and out. Great. But the Dominators don't have it. Oh, what were they thinking? With the Dominators, it's fixed IPD. So if your eyes are too far apart or too close together, you're going to end up either not seeing a really sharp image because the images won't overlap perfectly, 
or you're going to get a bit dizzy or a headache or have to stare at the thing cross-eyed. Ah, oh, what a shame, you know, sort of, having said that, a lot of people find no problem because they've obviously chosen an IPD that matches most people's eyes. And if you're only a half a mile out, well, that won't make much, too much difference. But if you've got really, really, if you're a real bad criminal, you probably can't use these. That's a good way of making sure they don't fall into the hands of terrorists, I suppose, because terrorists must have really narrow eye spacings. So back to these. Um, yeah, I, I just love the form factor of these. They're so much smaller and they feel strong and, you know, brilliant. I'm going to try these out uh, as soon as the sun shines again, even though I'll have to use a fat shark. I'll, just, I'll use my pole. I can plug in the AV lead and use my pole. That's what I'll use. It'd be nice if I had these with the, um, the Fox Tech uh, a Sky RF compatible receiver, but I don't. And having said that though, that um, these, the reason, one of the reasons I don't like these old receivers is they're not very sensitive because I found that using the um, Fox Tech Sky RF system 5.8, I could get two kilometers on 200 milliwatts with a nice set of homemade circularly polarized antennas. When I use the Fat Shark receivers and the 600 milliwatt Fat Shark transmitter, and that's three times the power, and the Fat Shark antennas, I could only get 1.2 kilometers, 1.5 kilometers. So these receivers are way less sensitive than the Sky RF ones, which is a shame because, you know, but having said that, Fat Shark have made some new receivers apparently, which are uber sensitive. So you'll be able to get the same kind of range out of the Fat Shark system as you got out of the Fox Tech one. Well, at least I, I hear that's the case. I'll have to get my hands on a set of, or a new receiver and try it. And if it is really good, I'll let you know. But um, that would make Fox Shark, the Fat Shark, just the brilliant solution, wouldn't it? So. A couple of words of warning about these glasses. Now, as you can see, they've got lenses in here, quite in the case of the, the original ones, really, really powerful lenses, very you know, high magnification, and some LCDs behind them. And I'm sure most people, when they were younger and horribly mean and had their eyes close together, used to get a magnifying glass on a sunny day and, and burn stuff, you know, burn their name in a piece of wood or even burn ants, horrible things like that. Terrible children, we all were. So you know that when you have a magnifying lens and sun, you can get some really intense temperatures at, you know, behind it. And what happens if you leave your fat sharks or any of these video glasses out on a sunny day while FPVing, so the sun shines in here, is really bad news. It can melt the LCD displays, damage them, ruin them. So don't do it. You've really got to make sure the sun does not shine in there, even inadvertently if you're holding your glasses because you've just had a flight and you're holding them so the sun's shining in there, a couple of seconds, poof. They're knackered. So, for that reason, Fat Shark have always provided a range of protection for their goggles. The original set I bought, you know, my, my original Fat Sharks, these ones, they came with a lovely velvet pouch. Look at that. Just like jewellery. You know, you could throw a couple of stones in there, the wife would think you're giving her some pearls. Um, and it has a little drawstring at the top, Ooh, so you can pull it tight. And how wonderful is that? And to be honest, it's damn near useless. I mean, it's so hard to actually get them in there. Um, because, oh, well, you know, nearly useless. And the thing that really, really annoys me about these things is it's black. In fact, well, the glasses are black too. Why on earth are these black? Because I find if I'm out there FPVing in the lovely warm summer sunshine, they get damn hot. The sun beats down on the glasses, all of them, whether it's, you know, all three of the different models, they all get really hot because they're black. Black absorbs heat from the sun. So you don't want anything that's got electronics in it getting hot because the hotter it gets, the more likely it is to fail. So why don't they make them white? Why don't, you know, at least a nice shade of gray. And the other option they give you is they give you these sort of nice cases like this, which is it. So you can put your, your dominators in here. See this fits in there very nicely and the, the little lead curl winds up there and you can just zip it up like that, see that? And that protects it from knocks and bangs, stops the sun shining in the lenses, but look what color it is, it's still black. Oh. And then with the attitude ones, you get an even different case. So your attitude glasses can go in here nicely and the little lead can wind up and you can zip it up like that and it's all safe, unless you sit on it or stand on it and the sun can't shine in, but it's black, it's black, what were they thinking? Sharks aren't black. They should have made these a nice light color so that when you leave them out in the sun while you're FPVing and you've stopped to have a drink or whatever, then your glasses aren't gonna cook. This is a little portable oven in the summer. What were they thinking anyway? So, but 
Suffice to say, always make sure you've got somewhere to put your glasses. As soon as you take them off, where they're not going to get the sun shining in them. In fact, that they're not in the sun because you don't want them getting hot. And uh, you know, make a little box up, little white box. Pop them in the little white box. Close the lid. Good as gold. Way to go. So there you go. That's a little bit of info on the Fat Shark range of glasses. And I have to say, I've looked at a lot of different video glasses over the years, and I keep coming back to my Fat Sharks because they work. They seem to be well supported. The company seems to do a good job of looking after its customers and I haven't found anything to beat these yet. So I'm happy as Larry with my fat sharks. And um, if you've got any comments, of course, put them on the bottom of the video. Any questions, the same if you've had experience with the fat sharks or any other kind of video glasses for FPV, then why not tell us about it in the comments on this video. And uh, I thank you for watching. There's a lot more FPV stuff coming up before the summer's shot. And uh, if you've got any suggestions for videos you'd like to see, put that in the comments as well. And I'll do my best to accommodate you. Thank you for watching. See you again very soon on RC Model Reviews.